I'll do that again. Okay, take I'm a bit tired. I might. Mm, okay. So this video is a little diversion from the usual materialistic art supply reviews. I mean, buying and reviewing art supplies is fun, but in reality, it's a distraction from artistic development. The cost of the pen I'm holding isn't going to help me move it around the paper any better. Yeah, the masters of old didn't have any access to any of the fancy art brands that we have access to today. Sometimes I wonder if they would be impressed by a cheap brush you would buy at a dollar store. Of course, they would be more impressed by the time machine that you use to give them the brush. Startling them as they drop the bit of charcoal, or the dead squirrel tied to the end of a stick, or whatever else they were using back then. A live squirrel on the end of a stick? Hey, if you got a live squirrel that had been dipped in ink and then place it on the canvas, could you then get a long stick with a nut tied to the end of it? And then could you then draw with the squirrel by moving the nut around in front of it? I don't know. I'm an Australian. I've never seen a squirrel, but I'm still curious. I'd like to see someone try, to be honest. Anyway, I'd like to talk about making things that are bad or things that, that you perceive to be bad as in quality, and then showing people anyway. Because I've made a lot of videos and art that I've grown to hate, to be honest, sometimes only within a matter of a few months, I suppose the speed of the shift from finding something okay to finding something not okay represents the speed of my artistic development in some way, so I should be happy with that. I like the art of my past hasn't changed, but I have. And change means you have to carry the burden of a past you are no longer proud of. Growth is just painful, I guess. Can't be avoided. Uh, this is getting more personal than I originally hoped. I fear this video is going to be another one that I grow to hate. But I'm going to post it anyway. Upload it anyway, whatever it's called. Why am I going to do that? Well, I'll get straight to the point. Eventually. I think waiting for yourself to become better before you reveal yourself to the world is a massive trap. Because if you're constantly trying to improve yourself, which you always should be, you're always going to be a harsh critic of yourself. And there isn't some pop-up turkey timer to tell you when your art is ready for other people to see. And as long as you're alive, you still have the opportunity for improvement. So you'll probably never get to find out your maximum potential. Only the people that survive after you will. So if you don't start uploading stuff, posting stuff, showing people things... You'll be trapped in your own little bubble of self-criticism for the rest of your life. Doomed only to be a fridge magnet success. And, if you're waiting to become better so you can avoid others' critical opinion of your art, well, that's not avoidable no matter how long you wait. The greatest artists in the world have had harsh criticism. Just search for your favourite artist in the distant past. You know, someone has a good long history. Someone whom you think has a good reputation. Who you think has a good reputation? I'm not good at English, but I'm, yeah. Just put the word criticism after the name and you will find it. You will see what everyone has to put up with. So I think you just might as well start getting used to it early. As soon as you realise that you plan to show your world your art, you should just start. Yeah, so that's my um, little opinion on that. I also believe that when you're making something that Perfection is basically a waste of time because that would take you a near infinite amount of time. So I like to make something to about 90% perfect because I know the next 10% will take just as long as the first 90% and I much prefer to make something else entirely again with that last 10% which equals 90% of another project which will end up being better as the last one anyway because I've had more practice. Mm. And it also gives me a great big motivation to improve as well. Because I feel the need to bury all of my poor work underneath a great big catalogue of vastly superior work that I plan to make. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So that's my little snippet of personal art philosophy for you. I'm sure many other people share the same opinions. Yeah, I'm sure most of my opinions are basically an amalgam of other people's that I've stolen. There is a fly in with me here. A great big dirty blowfly. Anyway, so I've talked enough about that, and um, I'll wait for this blowfly to settle, and then I will continue talking. <laughs> Go away. Ah, oh, this fly. Why won't it leave me alone? 
Yeah, so anyway, I, um, yeah, let's start talking about material things now again. Art supplies are nonsense. So in this watercolour painting I'm doing here of a depressed fish in a junkyard, which is, used to be the Great Barrier Reef, probably, not sure. Another, another t cheerful depiction of the future. Yeah, for all of my previous watercolour pieces, I've usually used a water brush, which is like a little plastic paintbrush filled with water. But recently I've decided to try and get into more of a traditional watercolour paintbrush. Watercolour brush is watercolour paint. I don't, watercolour paint, I'm not sure. Anyway, I went to an art shop and I just said, oh, I would like to buy a good quality watercolour brush. Size 8, please. So I was given a Princeton Neptune, size 8. Now the Princeton Neptune, I must say, holds a lot of water for a synthetic brush. I've used other synthetic brushes in the past and the little hairs that this one has holds a lot more water than any of the others I've used. It's quite impressive, but there is a downside to it and that the bristles, they basically have no snap. They don't spring back into shape, which is a shame because I'm hoping to get a brush that could basically do everything because I've got a large rounded brush, which comes down to a nice fine point. But because it doesn't hold its shape, it's very difficult to find out where that fine point is going to end up. So for the rest of this watercolour piece, I... Man, this fly's really annoying me. I'm trying so hard to concentrate here, but this fly has got to go. How can I get rid of it? Grabs it by the wing. Got you now, don't I? What you gonna do? Can't escape. No, no, wait, out, out! Oh, I think got out. Aha, uh -huh, excellent. Yeah, so for the second watercolour brush I used on this piece, did I mention that earlier? I don't know. I bought a second watercolour brush which is an Art Spectrum Red Hair Sable Brush made in Germany, a size 4. It's actually a travel brush, so it comes in this um, little metal cylinder which just comes apart and you turn the brush the other way around and plug it back in and you've got a wonderful little paintbrush. And the sable hair holds a lot of water for its size and it also snaps back into shape after you lift it off the paper. And that is absolutely fantastic. Here's me saying earlier that uh, expensive art equipment doesn't make any difference and now I just kind of debunked myself, didn't I? So I fear this uh, watercolour brush journey will end very poorly for me financially because now soon I'll start looking at uh, better quality paints and paper and everything under the sun. Mmm dear. Yeah, some good quality paints. That would be nice. Another art supply to lead me into poverty. Oh dear. Or maybe the opposite. Um, yeah. I refuse to buy tubes of paint which cost more than a dollar per milliliter. That is just kind of ridiculous. Have you seen those Windsor and Newton watercolour paints? Crazy. Crazy price. It's like four dollars a milliliter or something. Better contain actual gold or something. Okay. I think I might go now. I think I might leave. Yes. I have nothing more to say. Except I want someone to tie a paintbrush to the end of a squirrel and then lure them around the canvas with a nut. I want to watch that video. If someone has an access to a squirrel and a paintbrush, please make it happen. Actually, no, don't. Don't hurt any squirrels, don't. Be nice. Be nice. I'd also like to thank my current subscribers and future ones as well. Thank you. You amaze me. You amaze me that you watch my videos. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway...